Okay, I want to do something real quick. This is for one of you guys out there in cyberspace had a question on a 2002 Chrysler Sebring with a blower motor issue. And I want to do it this way because I think it'll be beneficial for everybody. So let me do this quick, try to explain how this system works and where there can be some confusion when you're testing this kind of a circuit. First thing is, here's your blower motor in the, in the picture. And this dark green wire is hot in the run position. So what that means is this blower motor has power all the time and that all of our controls are going to be on the ground side of the circuit. So this is ground side controlled, we could call this. And you see our resistor is here and our blower switch is here. Our main ground point for the blower switch is right there. And so what this switch is going to do in each position is it's going to ground a different leg of this blower resistor, which is over here. So if you were checking this circuit, we just talk about what you would see in a normal working circuit. If this switch is in the off position, what you're going to see if you were doing your checks at the blower switch itself is each of these wires, the high, the medium high, the medium low, and the low position, every single one of these will show you 12 volts. And the reason behind that is you have power that's coming through the blower motor itself, and it's looking for a ground, and there isn't one yet. So this is going to follow this way. So you're going to have 12 volts on that wire. We're going to go through a resistor and it's going to go this way. And you're going to have 12 volts on that wire. And I know what some of you are thinking already is won't that resistor cause a drop? And the answer is no, because there's no current flow, no current flow, no voltage drop. Follow the next one. It's going to go through this resistor. And again, we're going to read 12 volts there, and it's going to travel through the, the last resistor, and we're going to have 12 volts here. Ignore this splice right here for the high position. That is an input to the computer. That's not relevant to what we're doing here. That's just an input circuit. It does not affect the controls here whatsoever. So that would be the first thing, is you're going to see 12 at each of these positions. If I switch this, we'll start in the high position first. If I switch this to the high position, what we've done is we've provided this blower motor with a ground that does not have to go through the resistors at all. And so it will come this way and it will get what we could say pulled to ground or ground side switch would be a better term that this blower motor now has a full ground. So how much voltage is left at the, at the end of this resistor, which is the only one in the circuit, it's zero. There may be a few hundred millivolts because of resistance in the circuit, but it's a full ground. This is a full ground at this point. And so what that means, if, if you were to measure any of these other legs, they're all right now going to be zeros. So in the high position, what you're going to see on all four wires is zero down the whole line. Again, this high position, you may have a few hundred millivolts because of resistance in the switch, resistance in the ground, resistance in the wiring. A few hundred millivolts would be okay. That'd be the high position. The medium high, this blower, to get its ground, has to travel through one resistor before it can make it to that ground point. Of course, there is a path here too. I'm going to draw this a different color. There's a path here too, but the switch isn't connected to the high position, so there really isn't a path. So voltage-wise, what you will see would be some number I can't give it to you because I don't know what the resistance values are. 
but you're going to have some number in the high position that would be less than battery voltage or less than 12 volts. And the reason at that point, if you were measuring there, think about where you're measuring. This would be the equivalent of you putting a voltmeter right here. So you have one resistor that's upstream of that voltmeter, which is the blower motor, and another resistor that's after it. You're basically reading the voltage drop across that motor at that point. So let's call this less than 12. And then at this point, my medium two or medium high wire, this light blue that I've colored red, this is going to be your wire that reads zero. And the next two are going to be zero. That's what that would look like. Again, we're measuring on the high position wire, this green wire I have drawn here, you're measuring basically like this. You're going to have a partial drop across the motor and the remainder of the drop across this resistor. And that is why you would read at this point, which would be this point right here, less than 12 volts, some type of drop. Let's continue. Medium low. Now you pick that position. This will be zero. This will be zero. The bottom two. The same thing's going to happen. We're going to have at this high position, this pin 10, it's going to be, again, less than 12, under 12 volts. And this is going to be even lower than that. It's going to step down even lower. Let's say, for example, this one reads 10 volts. Maybe at this point, this one might read 7 volts. Here's why. Blower motor to get a ground now has to go through one, two resistors. This light green wire is my switch position. And so these other two pins, these other two contacts, and you don't really have to measure it that way, but you just need to understand that this black with the tan, which is the high position, and this light blue wire are giving you access over here to different points in the resistor bank. So it would be the equivalent of you taking a voltmeter at this point to ground, taking a voltage reading here, and at this point to ground, taking a voltage reading here. And what you have going on is you have current flow across or voltage drop across the motor, another voltage drop that occurs across the first resistor, and another voltage drop that occurs across the second resistor. You add these three up together, these voltage drops, and that will equal your source. So you're seeing voltage drop along the way. So that hopefully explains what I'm talking about, that at this pin and this pin, you'll have numbers that will correspondingly drop as you go. So maybe this one is 10, and this one's 7, and now we got 0 because that's my true ground. This one's 0 because it's after all of this. We're getting our ground here. So this last circuit, there's no voltage left. Final one would be my low position. In the low position, you see that my ground is now going to be this circuit. So that blower, to get a ground, it has to travel through one, two, and three resistors. And once again, if you're monitoring at the switch with these other circuits, medium, low, medium, high, and high, you're going to have wiring that is attached to different points in the resistor. It's like you taking a voltage measurement here, a voltage measurement here, and a voltage measurement here. So it might look something like 10, 7, 4, and then what, what are you going to have on the last wire is 0. Now those numbers, I'm, I'm going to be wrong on these numbers as far as exactly the numbers they are because I don't know what the resistor values are. I would need to know that. And then I would need to know the blower motor resistance itself. And that's really hard to, to judge because a running motor has more resistance than a stationary motor. So even measuring the resistance of the motor isn't going to help us here. But hopefully that makes sense on why you're going to see those different voltage readings. I don't know if it's going to be helpful to plug in some problems here. 
because there's so many different variables we can have. I think we'll just leave it at that, that that's the operation of this circuit, and we'll see the result, and hopefully this helps this gentleman, and hopefully it's good for the rest of you guys.